Welcome to John Mark Stallings Field at Billy D. Hillier Stadium on the campus of Faulkner University in Montgomery, Alabama with all of the prepositional phrases out of the way. This is homecoming for the Faulkner Eagles as they come in at 1-6 overall, 0-4 in the Mid-South Conference. They host the Wildcats of Bethel today, 7-1 overall, 2-1 in the Mid-South Conference, one of the most prolific offenses and one of the highest rated teams in the country. Number 10 overall coming in. I'm Jeremy Smith alongside David Turner bringing you all of the action in today's contest. And David, as we look at this Bethel team offensively, they like to put the ball in the air. And that has been effective for them over the course of the year in particular. Everything running through, as you would expect, the quarterback, Joaquin Calazzo, who comes in with 2,223 passing yards on the season. A, a big number. Uh, to, to give you an idea of how big that number is, comparatively, Faulkner has 1,234 yards of total offense yeah. on the season. So Colazzo has been incredible. 18 it, touchdowns, 2,200 yards. Yeah, Colazzo has been the real deal for this Bethel team this year, 69% completion percentage too, which is insane when you really think about it. You're completing 70% of your passes, putting up those kind of numbers, and you've got a, you're leading an offense that is averaging 437.5 yards per game coming into this tilt here this afternoon. Just a, a offensive juggernaut in a lot of ways coming into the bill here this afternoon, and and the Eagle defense has has its job cut out for it for sure here this afternoon. Pro, the most prominent weapons for Colazzo, Mitchell Faulkner, has eight touchdown or uh, eight touchdown runs on the season. You'll see him a lot in goal line situations. Two hundred and uh, two hundred thirty one, actually two hundred four net yards. Apologies on the ground with eight touchdowns. And Marty Smith, 439 yards with four touchdowns. Colazzo himself has rushed for four touchdowns. And then in the air, it's J.D. Dixon, yep. 811 yards and 11 touchdowns. Uh, and Jalen Taylor with four touchdown receptions. So Colazzo with plenty of weapons. We'll hit you with the starters here. Joaquin Colazzo, the third at quarterback. Marty Smith, the expected starter at running back. The wide receiver core of Jalen Taylor, Avant Burris, and J.D. Dixon, the expected starters there. Tyrell Partee, the expected starter at tight end and across the offensive front. Jackson Surratt, Terrell Wynn, Jaden Taylor, Dylan Morales, and Logan Davis. For Faulkner, when they counter on the offensive side of the ball, the expected starter at quarterback, Raquan Beal. The running back, Jim Mays. The receiving core of Tony Hall, Damon Hitchcock, and Sean Vincent. And across the offensive line, Christian Boyd, Nick Rigdon, Christopher Groom, Phil Jackson, Jackson Oglesby, and Garrett Orr. Also expect to see uh, a mix of, of guys like Hunter Burke and Clay Morrison in at that tight end H-back spot as well. So those are the expected starters on these offensive. David, when we take a look at, at defenses and, and what the defenses have done this year, Faulkner giving up about 32 points per game, 31.71 points per game. They are led by Emmanuel Lolighton with 47 tackles and six and a half sacks on the season. Jarrell Williamson right behind him with 45 tackles on the year. And then when you take a look at this at this Bethel defense, Brian Hughes all over the field for them, uh, yes. 52 tackles. 52 tackles, six and a half tackles for loss, and that's coming from a defensive back. And this is a, a defensive backfield that is as, is as advertised. They have 15 interceptions on the season, and it's been a situation where they make the, end of the pick, they're looking to score. Uh, they've got four defensive touchdowns on the season. This is a, a defensive backfield that is as deep as the Eagles will have seen to this point in the season. So Faulkner readying for the start of this one. We're about four minutes away from kickoff. The Eagles have yet to emerge from the the locker room. You see the Cheerleaders lined up for the spirit line, the band in place. The captains for Bethel moving into place right now. We'll get you the names on those individuals. Number 13, Joaquin Calazzo the third. Darian Burns, number four, the graduate linebacker from Dixon, Tennessee. 
one of the captains. And the other two numbers, I've got a number 70 there, which is going to be Quintarian Wynn, six foot one, 316-pound offensive lineman out of Madison, Alabama. And there's one more number there I haven't yet gotten for the captains for, uh, for Bethel, but we'll get you here in a second. Looks like it may be 66, Jaden Taylor, but I'm not quite sure, so I don't want to confirm that yet. There is a six involved. I, I there is a six involved, either one digit or the other. And it will be, how about 96? 96. That's Christian Cantrell, the six foot, 250 pound senior defensive lineman from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. It's possible that that's a 95, which would make it Xavier King. <laughs> but, you know, there you go. You got your bases covered. The, uh, the captains for Faulkner, David Turner. It's number one, Raekwon Beal, the quarterback for the Eagles here on the afternoon. Number 14, Samaj Washington, the junior linebacker from Birmingham, Alabama. Number 43, that is Shinconi Lewis. He's a graduate defensive lineman from Mobile, Alabama. And finally, number 66, that is Jackson Oglesby, the sophomore offensive lineman from Crawfordville, Florida. So the captain's in place, coin toss taking place, and two minutes away from kick here is the Eagles in the blue jerseys, black pants and black helmets in the end zone to our left. Bethel, the purple pants and the white jerseys and the white helmets, the end zone to our right here as they ready to run out onto the field. Eagles will receive the kick to begin the ball game. So Faulkner will get the ball first here, trying to get its offense to work. And I think, you know, a lot of times you want to defer, but when you got an offense as explosive as Bethel, you, you, you want to keep them off let's, the field early, see if you can put a drive off. together. Yeah. yeah, see if you can put a drive together, run some clock, and maybe end it in points. And um, Look, I, th I think keep away is a, a big-time strategy when you're facing an explosive offense. You, I think you need to be able to run the football well. It, it can be, and – one of the things for this Faulkner team this year has been the struggle of getting that running game going. We saw it in spurts last week, in, especially in the first half. The offense was able to move the ball and do a few things well in that first half. And, and, and it was really, from what you and I have really seen, probably the best half of football that they've played offensively all year. And let's we'll see if they can start this game the very same way here this afternoon. So ready to go with this one. Clock with about 40 seconds left on it, ticking down. The penultimate home game of the 2023 season. Faulkner will wrap its home schedule next Saturday night, 6 o'clock kick against Point University right here at Billy D. Hillier Stadium. Khalil Pope talking to his special teams unit along with student assistant Daniel Janes getting the kick return team onto the field. Ball teed up, ready to go get this one underway. It's Braden Johnson, the punter, that will handle the kickoff duties here. All teed up and ready to go. And Johnson's approach and we're underway here at Billy D. Hillier Stadium. Beautiful kick over the head of Jason Gaddis and into the end zone and a touchback to start today for the Eagles. So drive will start on the 25 yard line for Raekwon Beal and this offense. If we sound a little sluggish, it's not intentional. We had a basketball game here on campus last night, the season opener there. So a late night for our broadcast crew back out here today ready to go for a 1.30 start. 
Raekwon Bill will go out of the gun. Caleb Jones is the running back next to him. Four receivers in the formation. Man in motion from the far side to the near. He'll fake the give to Caleb Jones and now dump it off to Caleb Jones. Three defenders waiting on him. Jones will take the inside route and he'll get the ball up to the 25-yard line. So back to the line of scrimmage for Caleb Jones and lucky to get that. Yeah, absolutely. Three defenders, like you said, waiting for him. And the fourth came quickly to finish him off. Second down now in 10 right from the 25-yard line where he started. Receivers out there right now on the near side, it's Malik Murray and Damon Hitchcock. Jason Gaddis is the receiver on the far side. Brody Smith, the tight end on the right. Bill out of the gun. Caleb Jones remains the running back. And Jones will get the give, and he is stacked up, taking down a loss of two. Confusion on the handoff. Jones actually ran into Bill once he, when he was trying to give him the football. And, of course, that buys the defense time to get to the running back in the backfield. Loss of two yards on that play. Not a lot of things in the playbook for third and 13. We'll see what the Eagles come up with here. Smith, the tight end, will split out into the slot on the left side, make it a four-receiver look. Now a stack look on the left side. Smith behind Gaddis. Bill out of the gun, stacks either way on the twins. There's the snap, Bill drops, pressure coming. He'll try to shake the, the sack and he can't do it. And it's number 91 on the sack for Bethel. That's Jerwin Young, the senior out of Brownsville, Tennessee. That's just Young there beating his man right to the punch and getting to the quarterback, bringing him down by himself. Great energy and effort there on that play for Young, and that brings up now fourth and long. Good yeah. field position opportunity for Bethel. Drives them back to the eight, so fourth and 27 if you're counting at home. And the punt out of his own end zone for Caden Davis. He'll take the snap, get the punt off. Return man will field it at the 41-yard line. He'll dance for a moment and get to maybe the 42 and be taken down. So the return man for Bethel on that one is number two, Demetrius Gilbert, senior out of Atlanta. Put him officially on the 38. I apologize. I'm going the wrong way. I called 42. It's, he's going the other way. So 38-yard line for Gilbert. Now they move him back to the 39. All right, Colazzo out of the gun for the Wildcats. Back is to his left and slightly behind him, making it a bit of a pistol look. And now the back will step up, flanking him. There's the snap. Colazzo looks, fires it left side, finds his man complete. That is number 84 on the catch, which is Alonzo Russell, the senior out of Chattanooga. You see Colazzo. Pure pocket passer look there. You don't see you don't see that good of footwork very often at the NAI level. And he had good footwork there, good pocket presence on the first down. He did a good job again. Getting those hips around right to the receiver. Touchdown, Wildcats. That's number three, Jalen Taylor, the graduate wide receiver from Grandview, Indiana. All right, two plays and six points for Bethel. They lead 6 nothing now with 12-12 to go in the opening quarter of play. Extra point attempt forthcoming. It is number 35, Andrew Welch, the freshman from Clarksville. Who puts it up and through, and it's a 7-0 lead for Bethel. We pause for a moment on the Faulkner Sports Network.
Ball will be teed up on the 35-yard line here as Bethel will kick it away. They lead 7 to nothing. Once again, Braden Johnson to kick it away. He got a touch back his first time. This one spins to the two-yard line, maybe the one where Jason Gaddis oh. catches it. Oh, my goodness. Jason Gaddis got absolutely clotheslined on the return. And that's putting it nicely that that was a clothesline. That was, that was, that was some viciousness to that one. Ugh. So Jason Gaddis got decleated on a clothesline. Seven nothing is the score. Faulkner at its own ten yard line. Beal out of the gun. Bill takes the snap. There's the give. Caleb Jones tries the right side. He'll work his way up near the 15, and there's the push from behind that will get him to the 15-yard line as the offensive line came to help out. Good first down play for that offense. Now second and five. Plenty of options available. Three receivers in the formation. Tight end to the left, Bill out of the gun. Jones continues to be the back on second and five. There's the snap, the give to Jones. He'll try the left side, get maybe a yard. They'll give him, yeah, right at a yard. Ref on the far side giving him closer to two, but we'll see where they spot it. They they'll, do. They'll give him two on the run. So make it third down and right about three here for the Eagles. Three in the formation. Beal out of the gun again, and Jones is the back. Tight end to the right side. There's the snap. He'll fire it. Nearly picked off. That route jumped by Javante Carter. Carter was reading that pass the entire way. As soon as Bill turned his hips or hips and shoulders to that side, he was breaking to pick that ball off. And had he had gotten there, that probably would have been another six on the board for the Wildcats. So seven nothing. Bethel leads. Fourth down and three. Faulkner to punt the ball. Caden Davis in the shadow of his own goal line to punt this one. Another opportunity. Bethel returner standing at the 45 yard line. And, and I'm going to call that a false start. Yeah. You don't have to don't have to wonder what the flag is. Ian Bain was ready though. Was headed down the field and ready to go. But that's going to make this a little worse of a punt. Caden Davis now punt out of his own end zone. Davis awaits the snap. That's a high spiraling punt fielded at about the 47-yard line. Return man gets flipped and taken down, hit originally by number 42, Demarion Simmons, Faulkner Sports Network's own, and then finished off by number 51, Arshon or Arshon Davis. But Bethel, good field position at the 43-yard line to start their second drive of the game. Defense! 
Four receivers in the formation. Colazo out of the gun, takes the snap, fakes the give, drops, finds his man on a sit-down route, and he'll work his way upfield. Big time yardage after the catch here. Spins off two tacklers, now back toward the sideline. And when you can throw just a little hitch for five yards and pick up right. 20, it's a big play. Jalen Taylor yet again on the reception for Bethel. You see why Jalen Taylor has the numbers that he has on the year with that kind of quickness and ability to, to play after the catch. He's got 565 receiving yards and four touchdowns coming into this one. And there he is again. That's a first down and then some once more. So two plays, two first downs, and knocking on the door again are the Wildcats. First and goal, six yards to pay dirt for the Wildcats offensively. Colazzo out of the gun. Has a back behind him. That's Terrence Roberts. Now Roberts will flank him to his left. Three receivers in the formation and a tight end. There's the snap, fakes the give, throws it over the middle. Jalen Taylor, touchdown. Three plays, he hit number three on all of them, and Bethel's up 13-0 with 8.33 or 9.33 remaining in the first quarter of play. Well, we said it coming in. It is an explosive offense, and Colazzo gets the ball out of his hands quickly. He does, and when they're starting drives in, in their own, going to their own end zone over here, it makes it a whole lot easier on that offense. Yep, and a 13-0 lead, the extra point pending here to try to stretch that just a little bit. Snap, hold, kick, good. Make it 14 to nothing, and Bethel will kick it off again in just a moment on the Faulkner Sports Network. Last kick return was a vicious hit that ended that play for Jason Gaddis. He is back deep along with Caleb Jones here for the second one. Ball teed up. That one's sent deep over the head of Gaddison into the end zone, and that's the second touchback of the day for the Bethel kickoff team. And Faulkner will start at zone 25. Raekwon Bill will go out of the gun. Styles Hughes is the running back. Four receivers in the formation. Takes the snap. There's the give to Hughes. He'll try left side. Be stacked up right around the 29-yard line and a solid four-yard gain on first down for Styles Hughes. Yeah, good one cut, foot in the ground, right back up to that opposite side of where they were setting that up, and Styles Hughes, like you said, four yards on that run. Good start to the drive. Four receivers in the formation, bail out of the gun. He takes the snap. There's the give to Hughes, right side. Gains one up to the 30, and that'll make it third and five. Tackle made by Timothy Hamilton on that defensive line, the 6'5", 243-pound defensive lineman from Chicago, Illinois. Trips to the left, one to the right. 
on third and five. Hughes to the right of Raekwon Beal. He'll take the snap, drop, pressure coming behind him, and he'll take off with it himself. And Raekwon Beal with a first down run. And that is the thing that, that Beal has been reticent to do, but I think he's going to have to. He is, and, and that's, that's the perfect opportunity and the, the right situation to do that. Everything kind of opened up in front of him. Usually he'd just step up and throw that ball somewhere, like you said, and this time he puts the ball in and, and takes off, gets those six yards that they need for the first down. And the other thing about Beal is, I mean, you got a guy that's six foot yeah, five. If he can fall forward, he'll gain nearly three yards. Right. And, uh, and and you saw him that time. It was a quick decision, and it was the right one. Out of the gun here, first and ten. Three receivers in the formation with a back and a tight end. There's the snap. There's the give to Styles Hughes. Hitting the backfield. Spun around, taken down. First man there was number one, Brian Hughes, their leading tackler. Hughes there again, also Timothy Hamilton yet again off that right edge. You noted he's a guy who came in as a defensive back with six and a half tackles for loss, and you see why there. That burst off the edge coming around the corner untouched for a guy that now is backed up as your high safety. Yeah. Now walks back up into the box, does number one, Hughes. There's the snap, fakes the give, throws it over, and missed timing on that one. Misses his, his intended target, Damon Hitchcock, so third and about 13 or so here. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Out of the gun again, we'll go Raekwon Bill Styles Hughes is the back next to him. Takes a snap, drops, pressure coming. Fires it over the middle, tipped alive and incomplete. And now Faulkner will punt the football. But they get their first first down of the game out of the possession. And they had a, have a little bit of room to actually punt now. That was just a good play by the linebacker. Had the receiver there in the spot. Linebacker just tips that ball up and dangerously then could have been intercepted. Caden Davis's punt. A good one. Drives the return man back to the 33 and he'll retreat and lose more yardage. So the punt unit puts Bethel in its own side of the field for the first time today. That'll start at the 30. Colazzo, his team up 14-0, 5.53 to go in the first quarter. Brings the offense back out onto the field. Three receivers, takes the snap. Hands it off and a run up to about the 33-yard line. And that is Mitchell Faulkner, the freshman running back. 5'9", 240 pounds. From Arlington, Tennessee. Yeah, that's that is a uh, that's a bowling ball of a running back. It's hard to get lower than him. Yeah, when you're going to make the hit. And not somebody you want to meet in one of those gaps there, trying to make that stop by yourself. Alonzo hits him on the right side, and Mitchell Faulkner will get decent yardage up to about the 35, and now make it a third and five. Three receivers, out of the gun will go Colazzo. Matthew Witherspoon made the stop on the last play, Demopolis, Alabama zone. 
Big hit there, and that'll force a punt from Bethel. First time today they're held without a first down. Catch was made by J.D. Dixon, the junior wide receiver from Waverly, Tennessee, and the leading receiver on this team. Josh Taylor came up and hit him as soon as the ball got there, prevented him from going anywhere with it. So fourth and about a yard or two. And punter onto the field is Braden Johnson. He'll take the snap, gets that punt off. It is a high punt, fair catch called for. And that's kick catch interference, textbook. And they missed it. J Jaceus Clark was ready to lay Gaddis out if Gaddis hadn't called for a fair catch. Clark did what he could to, devo to avoid, but he definitely made contact with him as he was making the, the fair catch there, which is kick catch interference. But since he it caught is. the ball, I think if he dropped it, maybe yeah. they throw the flag, but that's not exactly how that rule's now, written. Right, and I think it was a wind or something blew that ball a little further over, which caused some of that. But like you said, it still was the interference on the, the, the catch, but – Uncalled on that one. As it stands, they'll start from about the 19. Four receivers in the formation. Raekwon Beal out of the gun. Beal works right, rolls back left, just has to get rid of it, floats it up, tipped alive and nearly picked off. And guess who? Yeah. Brian Hughes. Great play by Hughes. And one thing that at least you can see from up here in the press box, long arms on Hughes. And yeah. you saw it. You saw evidence of that right there on that play. Flag in the backfield is going to be a roughing the passer, it looks like, against Bethel. And so Faulkner is going to move up to the 34-yard line. So Faulkner gets something out of that. Their second first down of the game. And Beal scrambled around long enough to keep that play alive. Three receivers to the left, one to the right, and Sean Parnell's the quarterback, and you got to hope Raquan Beal's okay. Well, Beal Beal wa is, yeah. waving the substitution off yeah. when he got, got called. but So he is standing there and ready to go back in maybe. We'll see. Parnell on the draw play gets a yard. They'll stay with Parnell here. Now they send Beal onto the field. So Parnell took the snap, ran forward for a yard, got it to second and nine, and back to Raekwon Beal. Trips right, one left, Beal out of the gun. Tim Cody is the back next to him. Takes the snap, drops, looks, fires, hits Damon Hitchcock, and it's blown dead, a false start. Procedure call against Faulkner. They're going to go backwards here. Trips right, one left, Bill out of the gun again, Tim Cody with him. Takes the snap, drops, looks, man in his face, nowhere to go, and he's sacked. Darian Burns, the graduate linebacker from Dixon, Tennessee. Came right through that line on a little delayed blitz. Got right to the face of Raekwon Beal. So third and 24 now. Beal needed to just get rid of that one, and he waited too long for something to happen. And then what happened was not what he wanted. Got a receiver to either side. Beal out of the gun. Cody's next to him. 
He'll take the snap. There's the draw play to Tim Cody. Get a couple yards, and the punt unit will come on the field for the Eagles. I was going to say, I think we're all, all we're going to see is a little quick draw play here. Get the punt unit on the field. Don't risk the turnover. Down to about a minute and a half remaining in the opening quarter of play. Caden Davis will punt it away. Return man back, inching up to about the 45-yard line. Davis will try to drive him back, and he will back to the 40, and it is caught there, and he'll work right. Now dips back to the 30, and they wrap him up, and he gave up yardage. Lost about yeah. seven from yeah, where he up, caught the ball. Gave up seven yards on that return. Cortez Etman on the return. So, at the 33-yard line, Colazo and company back to work for the Wildcats. Two touchdowns and a punt on their resume today. There's the snap, fakes the give, drops, pressure, fires it. And nice job there by J.D. Dixon. I don't think I think he knew he didn't have a shot at the ball, but he got to, had to get a hand on it. Otherwise, it's likely a pick. So incomplete. Three receivers in the formation. Tight end on the right side, and out of the gun again goes Colazzo. There's the snap, fakes the give, fires complete, and first down yardage to Avant Burris. Ball at the 45 now. Twin receivers to either side, and Colazzo out of the gun again with a tight end to the left side. Faulkner with two down linemen and two rushers stood up on the edge. Colazzo takes the snap, drops, fires it left side. There's Taylor, first down yardage after the catch. Dragging tacklers and working his way forward across the 35 to the 34-yard line of Faulkner. And the big first half continues for Jalen Taylor. And that'll get us to the end of the first quarter here. Well, seemingly, the clock is now at 3.1. Nice. They move the chains. That'll start the clock. We'll there end the is. first quarter with Bethel leading 14 to nothing on the Faulkner Sports Network. There's the snap to Colazzo, fakes the give, steps up in the pocket, finds his man Taylor all alone. Another first down to Taylor. He had four catches, 64 yards, and two touchdowns in the first quarter. And he starts the second quarter with another first down grab. 
if he doesn't stumble after making that catch. There's plenty of green grass. Might have had touchdown number three on that one. Colazzo out of the gun, three receivers in the formation. Takes the snap, fakes the give, pressure from behind. Elisha McNeil wrapped him up, and he was able to get rid of it at the feet of Tyrell Partee, the uh, tight end from Memphis. Heads up play by Colazzo, knowing that he's either going to take, have to take a sack or get rid of the football the last second possible second does get rid of the football saves the sack second down and 10 three receivers <laughs> out of the gun goes Colazzo he's got a tight end to his right takes the snap there's the give working right tackle driving his legs He'll get up to about the 17-yard line. Maybe we'll see where the ref puts him. They're going to put him at the 18. So, a gain of two. Good job by Jarrell Williamson coming up, taking the legs out of the big running back. Actually put him at the 17. The line of scrimmage was the 18, so a gain of one. Third down at about nine here. Partee checks out. They're going to bring another receiver in. That's Will Secker, the sophomore from Charlotte, Tennessee. Three receivers. Out of the gun goes Colazzo. Or four receivers, rather. Apologies. Colazzo steps up and looks for the aforementioned Secker. Couldn't hit him. And now the field goal entered onto the field for Bethel. Looks like number 35, Andrew Welsh, the freshman kicker from Clarksville, Tennessee, will handle the duties. So Welsh to kick it. Braden Johnson, the punter, is the holder. Fourth and nine, about a 24-yard attempt here. Or 34-yard no attempt. The 34-yarder misses, and Faulkner holds, and it stays 14 to nothing. Ball on the 20. Bill takes the snap. There's the give. Gets it up to the 21-yard line. So Tim Cody on the first down run makes it second and nine. Timeout on the field. No indication who called it, but there is a timeout. Trainer is checking okay. on an offensive lineman over here for Faulkner, who is down on the sideline. It is... Number 65, Christopher Groom, the freshman out of Maplesville, gets up and is able to walk off. But that is one unit where the Eagles can scarcely afford another injury. They've been beleaguered on that offensive front. So Beal out of the gun. Two receivers. 
Garrett Orr is the tight end. Or might be Hunter Burke. I can't see if it's 39 or 49. Cody remains the back. Bill looks for the snap. There's the give to Tim Cody. He works around the right side and gets it up to about the 25-yard line. It's going to make it third and manageable here. And from where they started, third and now about five yards, pick up the first down. Malik Murray is the one out, out to the left. Jason Gaddis to the right. Bill out of the gun. Takes the snap and drops. Flips it up down the left side. Got a man and Malik Murray overthrew him just a little bit. Throw just a little too wide off the hand of Raquan Bill. Receiver did have the half that step on the on the defender. So incomplete. Fourth down and five. The punt unit onto the field again. Caden Davis been busy today. I believe this will be his fourth punt. Let's see if I'm correct. No, this will be his fifth. So four punts in the first quarter for Caden Davis. He'll punt again here. This one, a good one. Drives the return man all the way back to the 32-yard line. He'll retreat again and get wrapped up, taken down right at the 31. So Caden Davis with a nice boomer of a punt. Going to spot him the 32. About 45 yards or so on the punt there. Davis continues to do good work. Colazzo out of the gun. Move, Four receivers. Move the spot back to the 31. Colazzo fires down the left side, complete to Taylor. Back shoulder throw to Taylor. You see the timing between those two. Ball was out of Colazzo's hands well before Taylor broke down and turned. Josh Taylor was the defensive back there. One of the things of note is that Faulkner's top two corners are both injured and out. So they've got some guys in some different roles here. Fakes the give, now fakes the throw, keeps it himself and a quick little scramble up for about two yards to the 47. will make it second and eight. Colazzo with almost a little Statue of Liberty action on one of those. But fake the give, fake the throw, and read the pressure and just get what you can. Two receivers to the right, one uh, one to the left. There's a tight end to the left and a back to the left of Colazzo. There's the snap, drops, looks, pressure, hits his man, incomplete. Broken up by Samaj Washington. Samaj Washington did a great job picking up the receiver. That was J.D. Dixon coming across. A little route across, right across the, the front backside of that defensive line and ends that before it could get started. Third down and eight. Ball on the 37, third and eight, or 47, correction, third and eight. Two receivers to the right, one to, or three to the right. One of them's tight into the line there. And he hits Taylor, but Taylor can't catch it. So that'll make it fourth down and eight in the punt unit coming onto the field for the Wildcats. Colazzo probably put a little bit more on that pass than Taylor was expecting. Led to the drop. 
So Bethel scored on its first two possessions, and the Faulkner defense has held in each ensuing possession. Now they'd like to put together a good possession of their own and get back in the ballgame. Johnson's pun over the head of Jason Gaddis will check up at the 10 and roll all the way down to inside the five-yard line. And Faulkner with his back against the wall as it takes over here. Are they arguing? They may be saying that, okay, now there's a thumbs up. It looked like the conversation might have been for a moment, did he step into the end zone when he touched the ball? But the Bethel defender in the area gave a thumbs up, presumably to signal, no, no, we're good. It's on the five-yard line. So Beal will go out of the gun. Three receivers and a tight end. Jim Mays is the back next to him. Bill takes a snap, drops, hits his man underneath incomplete. And that was Jacius Clark. It is credited with the pass breakup on that one. Was well, good defense by Clark coming over the top of the receiver and knocking that ball away without committing the penalty. Caleb Jones will check in along with Garrett Orr. Three receivers in the formation. Bill takes the snap, there's the give. He'll try the middle. Be taken down up at the six yard line. So right back to the line of scrimmage. Or a gain of one, correction. Make it third and nine. Third down and nine, Bill looking to try to get something done for his offense here, even if that's just getting Caden Davis some room to punt. There's the snap, there's the give. Caleb Jones tries left side. He'll dive forward and get to the 12 yard line. So make it fourth and about three in the punt unit on the field. Gave Davis a little bit of breathing room here. Still be punting inside his own end zone. Return man for Bethel is in plus territory at about the 48 of Faulkner, now backing up toward midfield. Last couple have gotten over his head, so he backs up this time, and he's still driven back to about the 42-yard line, and he'll get loose Blockers down the left side. A big return, 50, almost 50 yards, and he'll get it, see where they put him out, at the 10-yard line. So, yeah, right about a 50-yard return. Wound up setting himself up perfectly with blockers. Blockers all up that far side of the field led to the big return. So Colazzo brings the offense out 10 yards away from a third touchdown. They lead 14-0. Four receivers in the formation, one back next to Colazzo. Defense needs a turnover in the worst way here. Colazzo throws it into the end zone. Great catch. Did he did he catch it? He did. He did. Touchdown, Avant Burris. Great job by Burris going over the receiver and holding on through the defender, the ground, the roll, all the things. And yeah, I think that's the part you were waiting on to see right. if he came up with the ball. So, 20 to nothing, extra point forthcoming. 
third passing touchdown on the game for Colazzo. 8.09 remain in the half. There's the snap, a kick, it's up. And it's good. 21 0 is the lead for Bethel. We pause on the Faulkner Sports Network. Bethel to kick it away here, leading 21 to nothing. Got the ball in a short field after a 40-yard punt return. One play, 10 yards, six points, and they lead 21 nothing. Johnson kicks it away. It'll check up at the seven. Gaddis will field it at the one. Works back to the left. Gets he hit hard and hit at the five, maybe the six. Give it up to the seven yard line. Think <clears throat> one thing you you can tell is getting side to side against the speed of this Bethel defense real hard to do. Yeah, every time this Faulkner team has tried to do that, it's been shut down. This been lateral movement only. You're not getting anywhere upfield from that point. Four receivers. Sean Parnell's the quarterback. There's the give to Caleb Jones. And a lot of that is for Bethel. They stay home defensively. You don't see a lot of them just running the field and doing what they want to do. They they know where they need to be and they they stay there. And that allows them to attack the the, the offensive player when he's coming that way. Parnell. A sophomore out of Saks, Alabama. He's taking a couple snaps here. Has not thrown the ball yet. I'm curious to see if this is a, a drive for Parnell or if a move has been made. We'll see. And he'll get up to the 11-yard line, make it third and about six. Third and six in the big tight end. Clayton Morrison checks back into the ball game. Six foot five, 250 pound freshman out of Wicksburg. Parnell, left handed quarterback, drops, wrapped up, throws out of the sack to Caleb Jones, which will save him the sack. Sack was saved. The punishment was not for Parnell. Yeah. Defender all over him, I believe, was number 99 of Bethel. K.J. Hicks, junior defensive lineman from Benton, Arkansas. So the seventh punt of the day for Caden Davis. Punting out of his own end zone again. And that went end over end. We'll take a roll, good Faulkner roll, but nobody's there. And now they'll recover. So over the 50 and to the 47 for that one. Good punt for 
Caden Davis in excess of 40 yards again. Put the ball on the 48-yard line. Out of the gun, takes the snap, fakes the give, drops, steps up in the pocket, swallowed up, gets out of it, trying to get rid of it, and does. Did he switch hands? I think he switched the ball to one hand and then back to his throwing hand. He very well may have. He got out of about four different sack opportunities right there and makes a strike first down to his leading receiver, J.D. Dixon. Just a impressive play there by Colazzo. So he finds Dixon. Ball's on the 29-yard line. With 6-12 to go in the half, we've got a timeout. We pause on the Faulkner Sports Network. Ball on ball on the twenty nine yard line here. Calazzo picked off our audio in and out. Apologies there. Jean Vincent, no, Skylar Henderson. Skylar Henderson on the pick. Maybe wrong again. Who knows? Was that five or eight? I think it's eight. Ty Simpson, buddy. I saw nine. I see nine. I, mean, <laughs> I right. mean, numbers all over the place. Yeah. Ty Simpson with the pick. The five looks like the six, which looks like the eight, which looks like, like the nine. <laughs> Getting old's hard. It is. <laughs> Ty Simpson saves Faulkner from a, a, another touchdown there for, for Bethel. A good play by Ty Simpson. 4 receivers in the formation. There's the snap, the give Tim Cody right side. I had to let you call the play because as we came back on air, the the audio in and out in and out and I, all of a sudden I was talking and and I couldn't hear myself. My wife would consider was, that a great win. It's going to say I know at least two people who would be happy about this. I see your lips moving but I can't hear the words. <laughs> Out of the gun again to go Sean Parnell with four receivers in the formation. There's the snap. He works right side. You can't get sideline to sideline on these up. guys. You just got to get north and south as fast as possible. Darian Lewis, the sophomore linebacker, there to end that play. Now Raekwon Beal back in. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Cody is the running back. Beal out of the gun. Third and nine. Straight drop. Throws it Pick. right to the defender sitting in the zone. And now a flag. Interception by the big man, number four, Darian Burns. Graduate linebacker out of Dixon, Tennessee. 
Got a flag down at about the 11. Got a player down inside the 10. That appears to be Jason Gaddis. He's up. Fourth interception on the year for Burns. That was a situation for Beal. He had a, a blitz coming from the far side from us. So block in the back against Bethel on the return. So the pick stays, just move them back to their spot 26 yard line. Nope. Yeah. Yes, 26 yard line. I saw the other end of the chain game keep moving. Ball on the 26. Colazo out of the gun, 21 nothing. Bethel, four and a half to go. Takes the snap. Colazo hits Taylor again. And they don't let him go that time. Good job on the play there by number 20, Calais Lusane. Lusane did a good job holding the receiver there, waiting for help to come to get him to the ground. Colazo out of the gun. He's got two receivers and a tight end to his left. There's the give to the back. He'll run that way. And a nice hit. Good play again. Taken down by Jarrell Williamson. Out of the gun again goes Colazzo. Takes the snap, fakes the give, drops, flips it up, back, back shoulder, shoulder throw, and what a play by Taylor. He stops on a dime, yeah. cuts back inside the defensive back, and basically takes the ball off the hip of the defensive back. Leaving at that, if you saw him when he stopped and turned, he almost just sat down to let the football come into him rather than going to it getting by the defender, and it's first and goal now inside the five-yard line for this offense. 2.45 and counting remaining in the second quarter. Colazzo out of the gun. Flips it up, and touchdown, touchdown. to J.D. Dixon, and that'll make it 27 to nothing, Bethel. J.D. Dixon gets his 12th touchdown on the season. And our, our live stats are running behind right now, but prior to that last completion, it looks like it may be updated now. The time, time is not, but nine catches, 146 yards, and two touchdowns for Taylor. So Colazzo... Over 200 yards here in the first half. Kick is up and good. 28, nothing is the score. We'll pause on the Faulkner Sports Network.
officially 197 yards for Joaquin Colazzo. Still a little over two minutes to go in the first half. Gaddis will field it at the 5, 10, 15, and he stopped there at about the 17-yard line. So Faulkner's offense back onto the field. 2.20 remaining in the second quarter. Down 28-0, ball on the 18-yard line. Raekwon Bill. We'll work out of the gun. Styles Hughes will be the back. Two receivers to either side. There's the snap and a flag. White hat says false start. So, Caleb Jones will take the snap here. More of a wildcat look. Looked like he wasn't ready yeah, for yeah. it. Caught it anyway and handed it off. Got up to the 15-yard line, which will make it second and 14. 14. 13, 14. Yeah. No, nope, put him at the 14-yard line. Damon Hitchcock will check out. Hunter Burke back in. Jones out of the gun. Takes the snap, gives it to Styles Hughes, and he'll be stacked up at the 15-yard line. So third and 13 from their own 15, down 28 to nothing. Raekwon Beal will come back in on third down. Play clock down to 15. One minute left in the half. Hunter Burke out, Damon Hitchcock in. Play clock down to three, two. One, and they got to call a timeout. So, Faulkner will take a timeout with 52 and a half remaining in the second quarter. Our Wi-Fi is giving us some issues, so we'll try to get you some statistical updates here on an alternate look. See if Verizon can do it. Right now, there we, go. we go. Got a game summary. Fun. Right now, Colazzo with 197 yards and total offense for Bethel, as you might expect. A, uh, a tremendous lead in that category. When you look down, Bethel averaging. Sitting at 220 yards yeah. of offense right now. Yeah, I'm trying to find the number. I don't like this. My eyes are not, not good enough for this. Yeah, 220 yards of offense. And um, Faulkner at the moment, 12. Is that what I'm seeing? That Am is, I reading that right? That is 12 yards. Okay. Now the punt unit will come back onto the field again, and it looks like Bethel's content to just let this clock run. So 
Faulkner doesn't have to punt the ball until about five seconds or so left. Caden Davis, busy eagle today, and they look like they're coming after this one. Davis will take the snap, get the punt off, and he'll take a good roll, fielded right about the 41-yard line. The, that's the horn to end the quarter. This will be the last play of the half, barring a penalty, and he'll get it up to about the 40, and that will get us to halftime. 28-0 Bethel as we head to the half back in 15 minutes on the Faulkner Sports Network. Mikey Peavy, I'm the third generation here at AMP Auto. Looking for a good used pickup truck? We got them. A good used car? We got them. A good SUV? We got them. Come see us at AMP Automotive today.
I don't know if there is anything I like better than good barbecue. Full Moon has the best barbecue and best smoked wings in town, and those onion rings are out of this world. Go buy after the game and use your ticket for a buy one get one free barbecue sandwich. Say hi to Chris in person at 7660 East Chase Parkway or give him a call at 334-676-5999. Connections matter now more than ever. At Guardian Credit Union, we live to make connections, to provide hope, to strengthen our communities, to create stronger financial future. These connections happen in our credit union, in serving our communities, and even in the small moments of sharing a bench with a neighbor. Connect to your goals. Connect to your community. Connect with Guardian. P Automotive is family owned and in the same location since 1985. We strive to be your one-stop shop for all your auto needs. You don't have to spend big money for a nice car. Our prices start at $3,995. We have several lenders and in-house financing available. Visit us online at anpautomotive.com. I don't know if there is anything I like better than good barbecue. Full Moon has the best barbecue and best smoked wings in town, and those onion rings are out of this world. Go buy after the game and use your ticket for a buy one get one free barbecue sandwich. Say hi to Chris in person at 7660 East Chase Parkway or give him a call at 334-676-5999. Connections matter now more than ever. At Guardian Credit Union, we live to make connections, to provide hope, to strengthen our communities, to create stronger financial future. These connections happen in our credit union, in serving our communities, and even in the small moments of sharing a bench with a neighbor. 
Connect to your goals. Connect to your community. Connect with Guardian. I wanted to take my career to a higher level, so I searched for an MBA program that fits my schedule, that's accredited, and aligns with my Christian values. I found the perfect MBA at Fulton University. Fulton's MBA program consists of 10 five-week courses completely online, and the quality of instruction is excellent. Imagine how earning your MBA degree can help boost your career and get you to where you want to be. Visit faultner.edu slash advance to learn how you can get started. to take the next step in your education and career, look no further than Faulkner University's diverse range of graduate programs. Our one-year MBA and MSM programs begin new classes every five weeks and offer a fast track to success, equipping you with the skills and knowledge you need to excel in today's competitive business world. If you're passionate about justice and the law, Faulkner Law is your gateway to a rewarding legal career. Our faculty and resources are second to none. Faulkner offers programs ranging from justice administration to counseling and psychology to education and biblical studies, providing the training and expertise to help you become the effective professional you want to be. The College of Health Sciences at Faulkner University offers a variety of programs, including physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech language pathology, and physician assistant studies. With experienced faculty, state-of-the-art facilities, and a commitment to academic excellence, Faulkner University is where your graduate journey begins. Join us and become part of a vibrant academic community dedicated to your success. Visit faulkner.edu to explore our graduate programs and take the first step towards a brighter future. Faulkner University, your path to success, your future starts here.
shout out to Faulkner Sports Network's own Libby Wright, the homecoming queen for 2023. And, of course, Copeland Hillier, the homecoming king. Those named at halftime. That is the the exciting part of, of halftime. Got through the band. They did a good job on their performance. We got the homecoming court. Terry Brown, number 92 for the Faulkner Eagles. Defensive lineman, part of that homecoming court. Was one of the candidates for homecoming king. And... Now ready to go, second half, 28 nothing lead for Bethel. Again, you look at the halftime numbers, there's, there's not a lot to tell you. 26 plays, 220 yards for Bethel, 30 plays, 14 yards for Faulkner. That's the story of the first half. That's, that's pretty much it. Again, the, the inability of the, the Eagles to really move the ball offensively, sustain drives, and we had some occasions where you get the ball up third and short, you had a sack or a penalty or something like that, knock you right back to where you're now third and long. And those are difficult to pick up for anybody. Jordan Browie kicks it away. Ball fielded right about the 10-yard line. Return up to the 20, 25, 30, 35. Tackled up near the 40. We'll see where they spot him. They will put him at the 40-yard line officially. So, good field position for the Wildcats of Bethel as they start their first drive of the second half. Ball on the 40. Three receivers in the formation. Actually make it four. Colazzo working out of the gun. Takes a snap, looks, fires, hits his man, and he's got plenty of room down the seam. One man to beat had the angle, forced him back inside, and Jarrell Williamson chased him down to prevent the touchdown. But it's Alonzo Russell, the sophomore out of Chattanooga, Tennessee, transfer from the University of the Cumberlands with a chunk play to start the second half. Yeah, plenty of green grass in front of in front of him as he made that catch. And then Russell just does a good job getting upfield, almost made that final defender miss and getting into the end zone as it is, his first and goal at the nine-yard line. So a 51-yard catch and run. Colazzo out of the gun, awaits the snap, takes it. There's the give. The middle of the defense is tried here. He'll drive inside the five-yard line. That's number 11, Terrence Roberts on the carry. Tough yards up the middle for Roberts. Got in that second level of the defense down to about the four-yard line. Now they officially yeah. spot at the three. So a gain of six. Roberts is the back again. Colonzo out of the gun. Takes the snap. Fakes the give, flips it over, touchdown, right, touchdown. to J.D. Dixon, his 13th of the year. And that'll make it 34 to nothing. So the extra point forthcoming. Johnson's hold, kick is up. And, and good. Good. Make it 35 nothing. We pause on the Fox Sports Network.
Jason Gaddis not back to return this kick. Remember, he was banged up late in the first half. Caleb Jones is back in the fair catch signaled for by 85, which is Jarvis Hardwick. So the ball come out the 25-yard line. And we'll see what this offense looks like in his first possession of the second half. So the Eagles will work from the left hash on the 25. Hardwick, Hitchcock, and Murray, the receivers to the right. That is Jason Gaddis in there on offense now to the left. So four receivers, Bill out of the gun. Styles Hughes is the running back. Bill will take the snap. There's the give to Hughes. He'll try the left side. Stacked up at the line of scrimmage, they'll give him a yard. Three receivers to the right. Now Hitchcock will flip from the right to the left. You'll have twins either way. Bill will work out of the gun, and Styles Hughes continues to be the running back. Shout out to our buddy Stafford Quinley out there watching the day. He's reached out and let us know. Longtime fan of the Faulkner Sports Network, Faulkner alum, former Faulkner baseball player. We miss Stafford a lot. And there's a draw play, dive play up the middle to the 28-yard line. Make it third and about seven. Two yards on that run for Styles Hughes. He'll check out. Jim Mays will check in at the running back spot. Two tight ends coming in. That's Morrison and Smith. So two wides, two tight ends, and a running back. Massive confusion now. 5-4 on the play clock. Three. And Rob Gray's got to burn a timeout because they couldn't figure out who, which personnel was supposed to be on the field. Play clock was down inside four seconds. So, Faulkner will take the timeout. And first drive of the second half, not, not what you're looking for here on a third down and seven. You can't figure out your personnel grouping and you got to burn a timeout. Yes, and of course – Third and seven is ideally not where you want to be in that situation. You'd like to be third and inside five yards. But you said it, so just not communication, no communication there, and, and getting that wrong, right personnel on the field, troublesome for the Eagles here to start the second half. So Gray had to burn a timeout to save the delay of game penalty. Two receivers to the right. Now both tight, tight ends, ends to the right. Yeah, now Morrison will flip to the other side. So a double tight set, two receivers to the right. Beal out of the gun. Takes the snap, rolls to his right. He's got to get rid of the football, and he'll fire it to in the direction of Malik Murray incomplete. Raquan Bill wanted a late hit, didn't get it. I think he had Gaddis open downfield, just couldn't get his eyes up with rolling out and the defenders coming at him to see him. Eleven fifty four to go in the third quarter, and Caden Davis will punt it again. Davis been the busiest eagle so far. I believe this is his ninth punt, but I can't get our live stats to update for me. And it's a beauty. He'll, and it doesn't count. They threw a flag. He uncorked a gorgeous punt, and it's a false start. And no one ever saw it. Statistically, it didn't happen. This is the ninth punt for Caden Davis. Yeah. 
<clears throat> just an absolute beauty that he just uncorked, but didn't happen. It's Cortez Eatman from Jasper, Alabama, transfer from the University of West Florida. That's the man that's back, senior defensive back. So move the offense back five more yards. That's, Davis just needs to look at it as an opportunity to get five more yards on a punt and go ahead and lay into it. Yeah, that one was a beautiful, it was. beautiful punt. But it's uh, a statistical anomaly. It did not occur at all. Now Davis awaits, takes a snap. Another good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Eatman will let it roll, and it takes a big-time Faulkner roll all the way back to the 10-yard line, or the 11 is where they'll spot it. Big-time punt for Caden Davis. 66 yards. On his ninth punt of the day. And now a hold called on Bethel on the return. It's a ball at the 10 for now. I'll move that back to the five. Yeah, five, five five-and-a-half yard line here. Since there is no five-and-a-half, you officially will be the five. Four receivers in the formation. Out of the gun is Colazzo out of his own end zone. Fires it over the middle, caught, and guess who? Taylor right over the middle in front of the safety. Taylor came into this possession with nine catches for 146 yards and two touchdowns, and now he's starting to threaten the 200-yard mark. Kalen Wimbish comes up and makes the stop as soon as Taylor catches the ball. Four receivers in the formation. Colazzo out of the gun. Takes the snap. Fires it incomplete. Wimbish is there. So second and ten. Elisha McNeil will check out. Avion Morgan will check in for the Faulkner defense. Out of the gun again goes Colazzo. Tight into his left, three receivers in the formation and one back. There's the snap. There's the give, back almost falls down. Emmanuel O'Leighton wraps him up. And the hit appears to be finished by Darrell Williamson. O'Leighton does a good job sticking with him, wrapping him up and allowing Williamson to come up, like you said, finish him off. Brings up third and nine for this offense. Four receivers. There's the snap. Drops. Pressure. He'll back up and now find a man and a big hit. Find Samaj Washington to break it up. It was short of the sticks, and he could have caught it and turned the corner, and Samaj Washington just absolutely lit him up. Good job by the DBs. Had everything else covered up. That was the only open option. Samaj Washington read it incredibly well. Breaks on the football. Gets there as soon as that ball hits the receiver in the hands and knocks it away. Punt from Johnson. Checks up and takes a good Bethel roll to about the 28-yard line. We'll see where they put it officially, the 27.
Three receivers. Beal out of the gun. Orr is the tight end, and Jones is the back. There's the snap, the give. He'll work left side across the 30 to about the 31-yard line. The gain of four. Nine forty in canning. Three receivers in the formation again. Bill awaits the snap. There's the give to Jones right side. Who won't get It'll beyond the line of scrimmage. They'll give him it looks like the line of scrimmage, but Could have made an argument that he lost a yard there. Again, really, really tough to beat this defense to the edges. There's speed everywhere. Three receivers in the formation. Bill out of the gun. Drops, pressure from Press behind, rest. strip sack. Picked it up with one hand at number 44 of Bethel. That's Darren Lewis, the sophomore linebacker. Yeah, Darren Lewis from Brighton, Tennessee. And, and Raekwon Beal is yeah, down. Raekwon Beal up now. Out. Took a shot. <clears throat> so, I think they're crediting Tyrone Johnson maybe with the hit there. Number 98, freshman out of Birmingham, Alabama, Carver High School. And now, Colazzo on a short field again, ball on the 14 yard line. 17 to 23, 251 yards, five touchdowns for Colazzo. 146 of those yards and two of those touchdowns have gone to Taylor. Colazzo dumps it off left side, streaking down the sideline. He'll get up near the five. So shy of the first down marker. That was number seven of Aunt Burris. Ball on the five. Out of the gun. There's the snap. Jet sweep action. Around the side. Easy touchdown. Again, that reception, J.D. Dixon. Now touchdown number 14 for him on the season. Yep, the sixth of the day for Colazzo. That'll make it 41 to nothing. Easiest cat catch J.D. Dixon will have all day. The snap, the hold, the kick is up. And good. 42 to nothing. Bethel leads. We pause. Faulkner Sports Network.
other shot. That one sent deep. Jarvis Hardwick calls for the fair catch. He'll make it at the three-yard line. Faulkner will set up at the 25. Thirty-five nothing. Nope. Sorry, our live stats are behind again. Forty-two nothing. Wi-Fi in and out up here for us today. Seven fifty-three to go in the third quarter of play. Three hundred and eighteen yards of total offense for the Wildcats. Four right now for Faulkner after that last sack. Three receivers in the formation. Tight end and a running back, Raquan Beal. Awaits the snap. There's the hand off to Jim Mays. Mays with a good tough, tough run, run up to the 30. Give him the 31 officially. Three receivers, Bill out of the gun. There's the give to Mays, works left side. He'll get taken yeah. down at the line of scrimmage. Thirty-one yard line. Third and four. Damon Hitchcock will check in. Hunter Burke will check out. So, a trips bunch to the right side, single receiver to the left. Beal takes the snap, drops, looks, rolls. Got to get rid of it. Nearly picked off. Tucker Marsh got his hands on it, couldn't secure it. And then Demetrius Gilbert was ready to hit somebody. He if he'd had his eyes up, he'd have a pick six. Throws behind Marsh, couldn't stop, get turned quick enough. It is now the 10th punt upcoming for Caden Davis. Davis had a 66-yarder his last time. 10th punt of the day. He is averaging 41.4 yards per punt. And another good one for Davis. Drives the return man, Eatman, back inside the 25-yard line. He'll turn the corner on the left side across the 40, the 50. Works back across midfield to about the 45, 40, 44-yard line. So a nice return by Eatman after a good punt by Davis. Ball on the 44. Out of the gun goes Colazzo. Takes the snap. There's the give. Works left side. That's the big man. Mitchell Faulkner inside the 40 to the 38. Six, 
Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Tight end to the, to the right side. Faulkner continues to be the running back for Bethel. There's the snap. The give to Faulkner. Right up the middle. Gets that second level met by two Eagles and still able to drive it forward. O'Lighton and Darius Williams in on the stop. Ball to the 33-yard line. Out of the gun again goes Calanzo. Bethel. Keeping the ball on the ground until that play. They fake the give. They throw it to Taylor. And again, a, another first down pickup for Taylor, who's over 150 yards receiving now. Showing 169, and that may not be including that last catch. Yeah. Pushing the 200-yard mark. Colazzo under the gun again. Three receivers. He'll take the snap. Inside Finds Taylor, Taylor again. again. And another big play to Taylor. We'll get you updated numbers on Taylor in a minute as our Wi-Fi drags just a little bit, so... Taylor does a good job getting that shoulder inside the defensive back on that inside route and just easily picks up the first down. It's going to be first and goal at the 10. 12 catches, 192 yards now for Taylor. Jalen Taylor, the wide receiver out of Grandview, Indiana, transferred to Bethel from Cumberland University. Back in the backfield is number 45, Martise Smith. Transfer from the University of the Cumberlands, and he'll drive his legs forward to about the seven-yard line, second and goal. Colazzo out of the gun. Takes the snap. That's a shovel pass to Dixon. That'll make it third and goal. Colazzo. 311 yards passing. Ball up now to the five yard line. Six touchdown passes on the day for Colazzo. Taylor in motion. Colazzo rolls. Now sets. Great now set fires. Wow. The other way. And that is touchdown. Number nine, Tyrell Partee, the tight end. They kind of rolled everything right yeah. side with that motion. And Partee kind of a little waggle out to the left, and they flipped it back to him. And pass a little off. He does a good job going and get it and getting it over the end zone. Now seven touchdown passes on the day for for the Bethel quarterback. Joaquin Colazzo, the third, 25 of 33, 338 yards, seven touchdowns. Now 20, two minutes left in the third quarter. Now 25 touchdowns on the season for Colazzo. Kick is up and good. 49-0 Bethel leads, about 17 minutes to play in this ball game. Faulkner Schwartz Network.
49-0 Bethel leads. Two minutes to go here in the third quarter. Wildcats will kick it away momentarily. And again, you're still third quarter, but you figure at a certain point they're going to call it a good day at the office for Colazzo. Yeah, you would you would imagine probably fourth quarter he's he's on the bench getting some rest and they're going to let the second unit offense come in and get some reps. But it has been a day. Seven touchdown passes for Joaquin Colazzo the third. That one kicked out of the back of the end zone. So, I mean, Faulkner will start at 25. I mean, I, that'll play, if, I guess, if you got to have it. You know. Yeah, he's done a good job today. He really has. And been smart with the football, completing 76% of his passes, coming in right at about 70% on the season. So, that he'll actually make that number go up if that was his last drive. Ball on the 25-yard line. Beal back out. Looks like Dominic Blair, the freshman wide out from Section, Alabama, number 17 in the formation. First time we've gotten to call his name this year. Beal out of the gun. Takes the snap. There's the give to Caleb Jones. He'll throw it deep down the sideline. Jason Gaddis off his fingertips. Good play design. It was. And a good play call. Just unable to make it happen. Just a little too far for Gaddis. Couldn't quite run it down. Yeah, get a little, just a just a little bit of arc on that yeah. ball, and that's that's six and a seventy-five yard touchdown pass. As is second down and ten. One fifty-five to go here in the third quarter. Bill out of the gun. Takes the snap. There's the give to Jones. Wrapped up and dropped in the backfield. Great pursuit on the backside by number 31, Kedrick Walker. Redshirt freshman linebacker from Birmingham, Alabama. Ball on the 23. They'll make it the 24. Now the 23. The down marker, they'll back him up a yard. So third down and about 12 here. Beal out of the gun, four receivers in the formation. Pressure showing off that right side again from Darian Burns. We'll see if he brings it. He drops out. Beal scrambling, looking, flipping. Open Caught Hitchcock. to Damon Hitchcock down the sideline, going all the way down to about the 10-yard line in that. I don't have to tell you the biggest play of the game for Faulkner. So, from the 23 to the, to nine, the 9 is where they spot him. 67-yard play. Prior to that play, Faulkner had nine yards of total offense. So, a big-time play. Eight on the play clock. Bill did a good job buying time to allow Hitchcock to get down the field. He's got to get the snap off now, and he's not going to, and they gave him some grace there. Bill into the end zone, incomplete. You could argue that he played through the, the receiver on that play, but incomplete. Second and goal from the nine. Out of the gun, and they'll blow this one dead. Timeout taken by Faulkner. 
Eagles looking for what would be just their second touchdown of the month. So it's just the kind of run they've been on. And I think that has a lot to do with Rob Gray burning that timeout right there. Like, you're down 49 nothing. Let's get a positive. Let's get the ball in the end zone yeah. and remember what that feels like. The Eagles have two more ball games this season, and you got a point team coming in next week, and and then you, you go on the road to go face Cumberland to wrap your season. And regardless of what the score is today, regardless of uh, what the overall record is, you want to end the season on a high note. And I think – you, you put up a little fight here in the fourth quarter. You execute some things on offense. You put it in the end zone once or twice, and you build something going into next week. Yeah, you want to put something on film that you can show guys to give them a little bit of motivation and some encouragement moving forward. And if you can do that in the fourth quarter, you'll absolutely take it. And, and that's that's what Rob Gray, this offense, is looking for, just something something positive that they can pull from this and and move forward with. Give is to Styles Hughes up the middle, spins off one, met then quickly by number four, Darren Burns, and taken down. Took a long time to blow that one dead, it sounded like. And Styles that's Hughes with a gonna tough be it for the third quarter. We head to the fourth quarter of 49-0 Bethel on the Faulkner Sports Network. Forty-nine nothing as we're ready to start this fourth quarter of play. Faulkner trying to put the ball into the end zone. Fifteen minutes remaining in the ball game. Beal out of the gun. Three receivers in the formation. There's the give to Tim Cody. Works left side, trying to turn the corner and taken down right about the three-yard line. Looks like they're going to spot him at the two. So Faulkner trying to put the ball in the end zone and salvage something out of what has been a difficult, not just day, but a month for the Eagles. As we noted a moment ago, I believe just one touchdown in the month. To go back and check that, but I, I think I'm right. That, that feels right. It's, yeah, it's they scored been a five minute. points against Campbellsville. They scored a touchdown against Cumberland's. And only a field goal against Georgetown. So just one, one touchdown in the month. The Eagles trying to get their second. Bring in a heavy package. Go for the quarterback sneak on fourth down. And they did not get it. They oh. stopped short. So they will end up a yard shy here. And Bethel will take over. Faulkner had the big play from Bill to Damon Hitchcock to get down into the red zone, unable to cash in from there, and it'll be Bethel taking over the football at their own one-yard line. And I would expect, given that circumstance, that maybe Colazzo comes back out um, because that's, you know, who's used to catching snaps right now out of your own end zone, and it is going to be Colazzo. 25 of 33, 338 yards and seven touchdown passes today for Colazzo. If you're playing NAIA fantasy football, one, what's wrong with your life? Two, I hope you started Colazzo. Two receivers in the formation. 
And a flag. And a flag. Think delay of game. Gonna, well, I mean, there's no Not penalty. The ball's yeah. on the one. <laughs> you flip it over. You don't even have to walk it back. You just sort of flip the ball over. So a massive penalty for Bethel. Least consequential <laughs> penalty there has ever been in the history of football. Colazzo out of the gun. There's the snap, the give. Up the middle. He'll bounce around, outside. look for room. He's got some to the outside and Picks a first, first down, down run. Wow. So he had no room up the middle. Bounced it twice, did Terrence Roberts. And the Reinhardt transfer gets the ball up across the 10-yard line and Bethel with breathing room. Colazzo will go out of the gun again. Three receivers in the formation. He'll take the snap. There's the give to Roberts again. He'll try the middle, bounce off a couple of tacklers. Darius Williams, I believe, is the man. Nope, Avion Morgan will make the tackle across the 15 at the 16-yard line. Sneaks through, picks up about four on the run. Out of the gun again will go Colazzo. Fakes the give to Robert, steps up in the pocket, delivers it to guess who? One more time at least to Jalen Taylor, who's now over 200 yards receiving after that first down catch. Had himself an afternoon for sure. Over 200 yards, three touchdowns again. There's the snap. There's the give. He'll work right side, turn the corner, and Kylan Wimbish, nope, rather Demarion Simmons, our own Demarion Simmons here at the Partner Sports Network, wraps him up, takes him down. So get the ball up to the 42-yard line. Second down and about four. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Colazzo out of the gun again. One back in the backfield with him is Roberts. Colazzo takes the snap. There's the give to Roberts. He'll try the left end this time and turn the corner around the left tackle. Not very far. In fact, they'll say he gets to the, I called 42 earlier. I apologize. It was the 38. This gets him to the 41. It's a third down and two. For this is what happens when you're looking to your yeah. left, you know. So, I mean, same numbers going opposite directions. Yeah, all you got to remember things. all the things, all the things. I was told there would be no math. There's a lot of math today, and all, it's all in the Bethel column so far. 355 yards passing for Joaquin Calazzo. Third and short here. We'll see if he puts it in the air again. There's the snap. There's the give. Trying the right the side. Middle, Roberts the for the first down, down run. Yeah. Demarion Simmons involved in the stop, as well as Shinconi Lewis. So another first down run. This drive started back on their own one-yard line. They're up to the 46 now. Eating away at the clock, though, 10.40 and counting. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Colazzo out of the gun, takes the snap. There's the give. That's going to be Marty Smith working left side. And he'll get up to the 49-yard line. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Colazzo takes the snap, works left side. There's Taylor again, another first down throw. So Taylor, another chunk play, and that big day continues for him. Get you his updated numbers here in a second.
if the Wi-Fi plays nice. It won't. 227 yards now for Taylor. There's the snap. The give to Martee Smith. Up the middle for a And look at him still spinning going. and bouncing off and another long run <clears throat> chunk play. For an offense that has been so much finesse all day long, that was a power it play. Was. And Smith just kept spinning and, and finding his way and coming off of tackles and tacklers. And the offensive line gets involved. There's a push, scrum, out of bounds. First down, Bethel. Kylan Wimbish injured at the end of the play. They'll check on him. We'll pause Faulkner Sports Network. So Kylan Wimbish up and able to walk off the field on his own power, which is a very, very good thing, very positive. But Wimbish dropping the wristband and limping off, his day likely over. Out of the gun, Colazzo. Hand off Marty Smith, bounces off a tackler, and look at the surge once he gets north and south. Smith doesn't look as big as he's listed, but you see the explosiveness and, and just shiftiness that he has to him. He's listed at 225 pounds, and you, but you saw the strength and the stiff arm there in the backfield, able to just push the defender away and then pick up positive yardage. Second and five now for Bethel. Out of the gun goes Colazzo. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Got a tight end to his right. Marty Smith continues to be the back. Good, long, time-consuming drive here for Bethel. Started at their own one. There's the handoff to Marty Smith again. Smith will get it up to about the 12-yard line. Running off the field for Faulkner. It's number 91, Ezekiel Moore. He'll also a member of our Faulkner Sports Network crew. Looking forward to working with Big Zeke once the season ends. Out of the gun will go Colenzo. Three receivers and a tight end. Third down at about five. There's the snap. Looks, fires, caught. First down yardage and then a little more. That's number the 83. Touchdown. And he gets into the end zone. Will Secker just kept dancing around until he found an opening. Got in the end zone. That's eight touchdown passes on the day for Joaquin Colazzo. Going to put him just shy of 400 yards. Wait for the updated numbers. We'll tell you officially where he's at. Three hundred and eighty-five yards and eight touchdowns. Kick is up and blocked. Ty Simpson will scoop it. Ty Simpson will look to return it. Ty Simpson will keep the play alive. No, Stepped he stepped out, out of bounds. <clears throat> So, 
55 to nothing. Bethel leads. We pause on the Faulkner Sports Network. Seven twelve remaining in the ball game. Caleb Jones, Jason Gaddis back deep for Faulkner. Fifty five nothing. Ball sent deep. Gaddis calls for the fair catch and doesn't make the catch. It's now Gotta still a live now. ball. And he'll kneel down on it. So, ball out to the 25-yard line. Damon Hitchcock with a 67-yard reception. Count, accounts for all of Faulkner's passing yards today and all but 17 of its total yards. As Raekwon Beal trying to get something positive moving for the offense, they got it all the way down to the one and couldn't score, and then Bethel answered with a 99-yard scoring drive. Raekwon Beal over the middle and Almost nearly picked, picked off. In and out of the hands of number 23, C.J. Bradley, the sophomore from Atlanta. Great inside position for Bradley. Just could not come up with the catch. Ball on the 25-yard line for second and 10. Running back in there now is, hadn't gotten to call his name yet today, for offense, it's Ian Bain, the freshman out of Valley Head, Alabama. We've seen Ian on special teams. There's the snap, the give to Ian Bain. He will go left side, get across the 30. They'll mark him at the 30. So a good surge by the freshman from Valley Head. Tucker Marsh wide to the right. Jason Gaddis wide to the left. Beal out of the gun. Takes the snap. The give is to Bain. Swallowed up in the backfield. Taken down. They'll say a loss of about two. That'll make it fourth down and punting. Again, will be Caden Davis. This will be his 11th punt of the afternoon. 41.9 yards per punt today. Clock now under six minutes in the ball game. You would expect Colazzo's day to be done. We'll find out momentarily. Unless Colazzo's lobbying just to get to 400 yards. Yeah, at this point, no sense to have him out there. No. There's the snap. Injury. Davis, another good punt. It'll take a good Faulkner roll and go out of bounds right about the 32-yard line. So another 40-yard punt. So from the 33-yard line, and looks like we will have a change at quarterback. Avon Rucker, the sophomore from Riverdale, Georgia, West Virginia State transfer. 
in Colazzo's day done. He finishes officially 28 of 36 for 385 yards and eight touchdowns. Gives up the middle to number 27, Dakota Braswell. Huge hold, bursts up the side. Still, Still going. going. How in the world? No helmet, but all kinds of effort. What a run. Kenny Williams lost his helmet in the fray. There's a flag down, which may well be illegal participation at that point. I think they're going to say that. We'll see. No? Face mask. Face mask. Yeah. Tack it on half the distance to the what, goal. And by the way, what a run. It was. You, you, you've only gotten one carry today. Make the most That's of it. That's a pretty it. good one. Yeah. So, moves the ball down all the way. We'll see where they spot him. Looks like the 12. Chain gang's having to find the football. It's going to be the 11. Long. So all the way down to the 11-yard line. Rucker takes the snap. There's the give, working around left Braswell, side. Touchdown. touchdown. Look at the burst for Dakota Braswell, the senior from Olive Brand, Mississippi. Transfer from Peru State. Two runs for him. And Bethel scores again at 61 to nothing. So Johnson will hold again. And Andrew Welch will kick again. It's up and good. So 62 to nothing is the lead for Bethel. We pause Faulkner Sports Network. Sixty-two to nothing. Bethel ready to kick it away. The touchdown run for Braswell from eleven yards out. Kick is up, fair catch, it'll bounce in the end zone. Ball will be spotted at the 25. The partner will take over there. It's about 42 yards. For Braswell on two carries. Faulkner takes its final timeout. Let's take it with him. Faulkner Sports Network.
Raquan Beal out of the gun. Takes the snap. There's the give. He'll be stacked up at the line of scrimmage. So no gain. Give was to Jonathan Fontaine, the freshman running back from Douglas, Alabama. Bill will work out of the gun. 420 in Canning remaining in the ball game. Bill awaits the snap. Play clock inside 10. Fakes the give. Fires down the field. Incomplete. Legs got tangled a little bit with Gaddis in the defensive back. Gaddis couldn't quite surge to get there. So that'll stop the clock with 4.01 to play. Again, Faulkner wraps the home schedule next Saturday night at 6 o'clock against nearby Point University. Skyhawks coming in at 4-4. Four and four. Trips to the left, one to the right. There's the snap. Bill drops, looks, scrambles out of pressure. Now he'll fling it down the field. Dominic Blair in and out of his hands. If Blair's able to secure it, it's six. I think C.J. Bradley again came across, got just enough of a fingertip on it to deflect the ball, change the rotation. As it is now fourth down, and the punt unit will come out again for the Eagles. Three fifty-two remaining in the ball game. Caden Davis looking to punt. His 12th punt of the day. End over end, fielded inside the 40-yard line. So ball at the 40. Rucker to bring the offense back out with 345 to play. There's the snap. Rucker will get it into the belly of Braswell. He'll get up to about the 36 yard line. Spotted at the 44, second and six. 44 yard line. Out of the gun. Braswell on the carry again, gets the side. You Turns see the, the corner, speed. Yeah. So, 240 in Canning here. Ball on the 44-yard line. This will be 
I believe snap number 60 on the day for Bethel. 532 yards of total offense, if our numbers are updated here. Yep, they are. So this will be snap number 59. There's the give to Braswell. Can't get to the edge that time, and he'll lose a little bit. Williamson and Ty Simpson combine on the tackle for Faulkner. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Rucker content to take time. I wonder if they begin taking a knee here. Second down, letting the clock burn down as far as they can. Five on the play clock. And, and they did. The knee. So that's going to wrap it. Bethel will snap it about 60 times, 59, 59 plays in which they – we're efforting offense, 531 yards before they began taking a knee. Faulkner, 52 plays, 87 yards, 67 of it on one play. A throw down the field to Damon Hitchcock. The Eagles got to the one-yard line and went for it on fourth down, didn't get it. They'll lose here today, 62 to nothing, to fall to one and seven on the season, 0-5 in Mid-South Conference play. Bethel will move to 8-1, 3-1 in Mid-South Conference play. The Eagles are back here next Saturday night. 6 o'clock kick against nearby Point University. Uh, a rivalry game of sorts. Looking forward to seeing our good buddy Deshaun Bullock uh, from the Skyhawks. He is the SID over there, one of our, our guys, the favorite son of the Faulkner Sports Network, bringing him home and saying hey to him. Uh, next Saturday as we get ready to wrap up our home schedule. David Turner, the Eagles, two more weeks. You're looking for something positive to finish the year. You are, and, and you would like to see your, your team get on the board here in the second half, at least give you something that you can look at. But if they can do that here in these next couple of weeks and end the note, like you said, the season on a positive note or some positive things moving that direction, you can work toward building something here next year uh, during the off season. All right, that wraps us up today. Again, Bethel 62, Faulkner nothing for Keon Brooks on camera and Brandon Campbell on production for David Turner. I'm Jeremy Smith. This has been the Faulkner Sports Network presentation of Faulkner Eagle Football. Good night and God bless you.